let's do some news. <laughs> My name is Mike P. A.K. Phony. The date is June 10th, 2022. I have to check the date, the month, every, the year, every time. I have to also check what the fuck's wrong with me. Anyways, so the time is like three something. Welcome everybody to news. Lovely chat. Joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do prefer. I do prefer here. Let me see. Let me, oh, let me reach over here. I do prefer to go ahead and have this guy right. Boop. There we go. All right. Now we're back where we're supposed to be. All right. We're all got places now. Ah. Lots happening this week. Lots of, lots of small, fun stories today. We also had a whole lot of conventions that happened. We had the OTK Expo. We have the uh, Summer Game Fest, Game Game Summer Fest, Game Summer Game Fest with Jeff Keighley uh, going on. We have uh, PC Gamer or something. PC Gamer Mag. What the fuck? I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of video game announcements because E3 is effectively dead. And so instead of everybody getting together and making a new E3, everybody just kind of does their own thing. We have these new little, uh, which is fine. Oh, we have the new little conventions that are popping up um, and getting their own, like, you know, their own stay in the spotlight, which is pretty nice. Uh, OTK, collection of streamers just like you and me, Ms. Kiff, Asmongold, fuck, tons of people ran their own their very own convention and it actually went pretty well. It was a little some awkward parts, but it felt genuine. It felt genuine, not forced, you know? Like there wasn't like some kind of weird forced happiness, but shit was awkward. They did a pretty good job of just being awkward about it. Uh, on brand, yeah, yeah, on brand. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was nice to watch something that was, uh, where we got to see a ton of game reveals. Um, a lot, some of them were smaller games. Uh, and uh, and we also just got like we also got interviews with a lot of uh, devs that normally we wouldn't even hear from. Uh, you know, compare and contrast that with like you know uh, E three, where you would have different keynotes or whatever that would happen, and they'd only bring up like you know uh, they bring up a presenter for like you know Borderlands or something like that, and then they would come out and talk about Borderlands, and that was it. They give like a pre a, a speech or something. Whereas on OTK, it was kind of like, hey, we got so and so here on the on Zoom. Let's talk to them for a little bit. They made this game that we just showed the trailer for, and they would just like talk to them. You know, and it was it was like, I mean, like, honestly, kind of like shitty interviewing. But for like a conversation, it was like, yeah, they're just having a conversation about shit. They got some questions in there, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty good. So, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm glad. I'm glad that we got a uh, uh, Mike still hating on cell shading. <laughs> It runs deep. It runs deep. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, Summer Game Fest also started uh, yesterday. We watched that on stream as well. Uh, the first day of that. Uh, that continues to go. Devolver Digital did their thing last night as well. Uh, also, also, also. Uh, they did really something special for the indie games industry. Yeah. Even though none of them play indie games. It was still good to see. <laughs> uh, and then today, I don't know what's happening today. More something. But if you're looking... For I, I, I'm not going to go through and detail everything. I just want to talk a little bit of OTK and then kind of move on and get to the actual news news. But uh, yeah, there's IGN is posting basically every single video for like every release. I mean, all of the let me let me just show you. So look, we'll start like here, right? This is three minutes ago. This video that is posted and then we scroll it and we scroll it and we scroll it. And then here's here's the first one day ago right here. One day ago. So like all this stuff. So if you're looking for maybe a trailer for something that you were looking forward to, you might find it in here. Um, did any of you guys have anything that stood out? Like, whoa, this game looks really rad, right? I think I have, uh, we played one yesterday actually that I really liked. Let me see, Steam. Um, <clears throat> let me see, we played, uh, oh, Metal Hell Singer. That was pretty dope. We liked that one. We, that means you guys are forced to like that one because I'm the streamer. Um, but yeah, there was a number of good ones. E3Recap.com is very useful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you really like that RuneScape one. Oh, man. That was a good one, man. That RuneScape game. Mm-hmm. We're the age of personal streaming service away for Phony Plus. <laughs> this is Phony Plus. Subscribe right now. $5. Subscribe. Spots on a rise, Sunbreak expansion. The robot building one. Yeah, the robot building one was pretty good. Uh, Roboco. Roboco. That was pretty fun. Uh, Callista Protocol. That was the uh, uh, the Dead Space-like one. That uh, uh, I don't want to say. It, 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 was a, it was a Dead Space-like game. Uh, but that one looked really dope. And then there's one that came out today, actually, that a lot of people are playing. I think Twitch right now is actually pretty flooded with uh, with people playing uh, this one in particular. Let me see. Let me go to browse here real quick. 
probably one of the top ones. Yeah, the quarry. The quarry. This is the one that is uh, somewhat um, Uncanny Valley-like. We go and jump into one person's stream here. Maybe we'll get an, uh, a glimpse at some of the characters or something. Loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so this game just recently came out. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Really, really interesting, good-looking uh, uh, game. Very creepy. Uncanny Valley, realistic enough to make it spooky. Um, and it is a game that uh, kind of goes on the suspense horror route, I believe. So, so yeah. So, yeah, some uh, some good announcements. Some pretty good announcements, I think. I think I think of the Car Simulator 2022. Are they really going to do that every year? Will Mike play this? Nope. Mike B doesn't play video games. <laughs> I don't play video games anymore. I just react to conventions. <laughs> uh, true. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Anyways, anyways, we got actual news. Good for good for IGN. Post a bunch of videos if you guys don't need it. Mike just says just, just chatting streams. Well, the just chatting streams are the ones that bring people in, and they have to sneak in the game. So I don't know what to say about that. All right. You guys show up for the just chatting, and then I have to be like, psych, and then I have to play video games. It's, I I got I got to trick you guys. I got to trick you guys. All right? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, routine 10 plus years in the making. That's right. Routine. Uh, I didn't know it was literally 10 years since they had like an actual like gameplay like like in-game gameplay footage released. 9 years uh, since their first one. Um and that was so that was pretty impressive. Routine. Routine, routine, routine as mentioned right right here. Rocket Bot, Bot Royale. That was also a good one. I got my ass kicked, but no one cares. No one. Knows. Anyways. Anyways. So, Let's talk about the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. They they finally came out and made some comments on what they plan on doing. Well, just kind of like the gist of what they plan on doing once the acquisition is complete. And there's not really a whole lot to talk about here because a lot of it is uh, what we would expect. We kind of expect them to not come out and say, yeah, we're going to close all these games. You know, <laughs> so they came out and they said they said the opposite. They said, they say, if we acquire a game that comes with a big community across a number of platforms, the last thing we want to do is take something away. Yeah, they said it, somewhere else in here. They also said that uh, that it is uh, it's their job to continue to nurture the community. They become like the new shepherds and they have to basically nurture this community until the community no longer wants to play the game. But we don't know what that, no, those numbers mean. Right. They didn't say that last part. I'm just saying that when the numbers show that nobody's playing the game then they're not going to pay for it anymore. We're going to keep Diablo Immortal running because we fear it prints money. Everything else is gone, raking all the Diablo Immortal monies. That's right. So, uh, yeah, they did say that they are planning. It says, we want to put, listen to this part, we want to put as many titles as possible from Activision Blizzard into Game Pass when they join us. So what does that mean? WoW free to play? It's kind of the big one. <laughs> I mean, you, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like already free to play for some folks, but for beginners, you're first starting out, it's really not. Uh, don't think WoW will be in Game Pass. I mean, is it not? I mean, I don't know. You don't know. Not free to play, but including your Xbox sub. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know. I'm sorry. And maybe I should be clear about that. Like they talk about Game Pass, right? Like that's why that's the, con the, the quote is they want to get as many titles as possible from Activision into Game Pass when they join us. So when I say free to play, I mean like included in that. So my apologies for being clear, but yeah. While rolling to Game Pass would be value. Yeah, that'd be huge. It would ask, is, be super huge. And it'd be a great gateway drug for a lot of people who maybe only pay for a while subscription and do not have Xbox, got live, gold, games, pass, premium, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, and it'll like get them into other games that are already provided by uh, by other you know games on their platform and all that. Uh, <clears throat> while on Game Pass at level 50, I mean, it should just, I mean, it's just make it free or something. I don't know, including the damn price. You know, sorry, what MMO, uh, see what MMO that size or game in general on Game Pass? Oh, there's a lot of games that are huge, 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 huge on Game Pass. Like, you know, Halo. <laughs> but Casper says it's not going to happen, though. Casper doesn't think it's going to happen. It's very possible. It might not happen. It's true. I mean, they're saying they want to get as many games as possible. But I don't know if that necessarily means the ones that people actually play. Or if they're going to be like, yeah, man, we're going to put Rock and Roll Racing on Game Pass. I do a little shimmy. <laughs> Every other game, but wow. Well, most of the other game, I mean, like StarCraft already has like a free to play element to it. Uh, what else is there? I mean, 
what else is there? <laughs> oh, Overwatch, I guess. Does Overwatch have a free-to-play thing? Nah. The Lost Vikings are on Game Pass. Oh, yeah, Lost Vikings. Yeah, see? No, that's not what they mean. I, I think they mean one of the big ones. Somewhere, one of the big ones. Um, but Lost Vikings too good. Rock and Roll Racing. Because clearly the sub does two big things. It gets wild players who traditionally don't buy a lot of other games on Game Pass. See? See, like I said. Uh, introduces a, a, a huge number of new players to WoW. See? C, C, Lost Vikings, not big. Mm -hmm. Jam more crap into Xbox game cult. Why does that have to be a cult? Why? Because there's a lot of people that pay for Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, speaking of Activision, Activision Blizzard, uh, we talked about this uh, last week, right? Last week, two weeks ago, last episode. Um, this specific article, I believe, actually. Xbox says he will recognize Raven Software's union after acquisition and closure. We talked about this last time. They they kind of have a choice but to do this, so it's, like, cool that they don't plan on doing anything to s stifle the progress that the Raven QA team, that, as a reminder, was the first major AAA studio uh, entity, I guess, to unionize. So, big deal for them. Last, uh, a couple weeks ago, they came out and they said... Phil Spencer says, yeah, we'll recognize that. Sure, no problem. And then Bobby says recently uh, in an Activision Blizzard put a, a, a note, said that uh, they also, that he's like, oh, yeah, he'll, he'll work with these guys in good faith and everything. I, keep in mind, this is legal. They legally have to do this. Like, this is, this is not, they can't come out and be like, we're going to fight this. No, they can't do that. They just can't do that. Uh, we, when we talked about this last time, it was um, what they could probably do is just make it logistical and legal hell to in order to get to the point to where the union is has any kind of viability right and what they hope is that by that time the, the everybody there is <laughs> has already moved on Close my door, please. Summertime. <laughs> if Microsoft merges the Q&A departments, that role might not exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. 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 Uh, they have to follow the law, just not fast. Yeah. Yeah. No, no Godzilla nudes this time. Although he did give me a list that he wanted me to read out to you guys. Um, <clears throat> of like, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know what. Just, it's basically a whole bunch of different characters in the Godzilla universe and and fandom universe. And so he gave me this list. So we'll 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 go over that list later. <laughs> There's a new kaiju game and I'll say shh no, we're not talking about that. Anyway, just let the people in the lower mid-range working class have their job union protection learned uh, from the Swedes. Enjoy the benefits of both sides. Ah uh, nah. There's no both sides. There's no both sides. One side has to has to ha one side wants to exist, the other side wants to just profit. So yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Bobby said that they're gonna work with them on trying to uh, uh, make the trans or, or get get them uh, um, get the negotiations, and everything going s as smoothly as possible, as slowly as possible. Uh, so <clears throat> we asked the Demo De De Demoblo, <laughs> yeah, Diablo uh, Immortal uh, uh, news. You guys probably heard a lot of this stuff, but just to, just to, there's some updates to some things. And also for those of you guys who missed it, so Diablo Immortal did come out. It is available on your phone. There is a PC, uh, UI. You could play it on PC if you want to. Uh, there is a cash shop involved. Uh, it is a, uh, a very predatory cash shop. Um, <laughs> Demorbius. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I haven't played Diab Diablo Immortal yet. That's okay. You could still have an opinion on this if you want. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the cash shop is uh, as 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 I was, we expected. It was pretty bad. So there's people who are like, for example, this uh, Quinn sixty nine. Quinn sixty nine uh, uh, played or uh, paid. He played played and he paid uh, up ten thousand dollars. And he got not one single five star gem, which is one of the highest uh, uh, rating value rating of gear. And the percentage drop rate we'll talk about in a second. But here's his reaction when he finally broke, uh, when he finally broke ten thousand dollars. It's a little loud, so. I spent 
I got nothing. Yes, dude. Anyways, I love I love the Channel Five shirt. Uh, so ten thousand dollars. I don't know why you would do this. A great experiment. <laughs> I ended up getting nothing. Uh, I know that Guns Games. Uh, one of our community members is uh, playing for free. I just some other people that are playing playing for free. Uh, I don't know what your uh, how your your gear score looks or anything. This is hilarious. <laughs> I love giving the opportunity to pay for loot at the end of a dungeon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he spent ten thousand dollars. I got media coverage. It's true. It's true. I just want to leave this clip up on loop. <laughs> So, so yeah, uh, it's some some users have actually gone through. They've done the math on um, uh, on how much it costs to uh, get Jesus Christ uh, get some of these uh, gems and actually have a, a, a handy chart here. Pay ten thousand dollars, lose your model marbles. Yeah. So it says every fifty legendary crest guarantee one five star. You do not get five out of five star gems. So it says what you think a five star legendary gem is is something with five stars, right? But the way that uh, Blizzard classifi classifies a five star gem is anything that can have up to five stars. So a one out of five stars is technically a five star gem. It just didn't come with five stars. Does that make sense? So, <laughs> there's layers upon layers of percentages and probabilities. And if you read it down here, it says here, it says, uh, every 50 legendary crest used, used guarantee uh, one five star, which is a something out of five star uh, legendary gem. Uh, and then it says here, upon a five star drop, further probabilities. So, once you do get a five star drop, then you go into this category here, which is 75%, uh, 75%. 20% and then 4% and then 1%. So this is one, no, this is not just 1%. This is 1% of 4.5%, all right? That's, it's a percentage of a percentage. It's a fucking scam, right? <laughs> like it's a fucking scam, man. Yeah, it's R-A-G, yeah, it's like, yo dog, I heard you like, <laughs> I heard you like gambling odds. So no percent, no, it's basically no percent. 1% 1 of 4.5, computer, what is 1% of 4.5%? Zero point zero four five percent. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's why I said computer stop. Computer stop. Anyways, it's bullshit. You can't call a possible five star gem a five star gem. Yeah, you can because it's a possible five star gem. <laughs> so they say there's a chance. Poker is gambling, but it has more skill involved, possibly winning in the uh, and possibly winning the prize pool than the other mortal. Moral, sorry, uh, as in getting loot, even though pretty much the same process buy and play game chance of winning. Yeah, so it's like winning the lottery, it's probably worse than winning the lottery in some cases, but yeah, they lay it all out for you though. They even use the cool Diablo font and everything, so you feel like you're still part of in the game. You know, it's not you they don't use the legal, the legal text, Times New Roman, or whatever it is, Helvetica. I don't know. But that being said, if you spend 50,000 to max your final gem ranks, the net power creep is total 1% damage. I have that right here. Thank you so much for going ahead. So this is actually posted uh, one day ago. Uh, there was uh, some quick maps that were done uh, to talk about how much money you have to spend and what you get for that money. Uh, and then they actually went through and redid that math. It still works out to be basically the same. Uh, it's worse than winning a lottery because you have to play Diablo. So it says here, it says this now means this. <clears throat> so I'll read some of this for you. So on a five-star gem resonance board, it, required, it requires three two-star gems and two five-star gems to max out the board. I made a post about this infamous third from the uh, And then it said that it So the, well, they made it worse. They cut all the gem resonance bonuses in half from the beta, including the five-star boards. This means now a fully maxed out five star gem resonance board gives 260 total resonance for a 13% HP damage bonus in addition to the socketed bonuses which are not very good. To put this in pers perspective a single five star five lit rank 10 gem gives 1000 resonance. 1000. The entire gem resonance board requiring, requiring two more max five star gems. This is a lot of like this is a lot of game specific speak but but you can already tell just by how it's worded that it is deliberately obfuscated like all all like you can't just do the quick math you have to do the quick math on the quick math in order to get the answer they make it as difficult as possible the, 
a single five star, five lit rank ten gem. It's da it's dancing wordplay exactly. So yes, this is this is as he puts here, fucking insane. They are fucking insane. Absolutely overcost and disappointed. Why does he say this specifically? He does say that this. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Says the entire gem is absurdly, it's absurdly overcosted, provides almost nothing, and even the chattiest Mega E Super Whale would scoff at this. The meta will probably be maxing a two star gems uh, and stopping at rank five, blah, 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 blah. And you save literally $50,000 by doing this, by not maxing out. Your five star gem could still roll a one. That's not cool. Yeah, exactly. I know it's not, yeah, it's definitely not cool, but that's just the way it is. So, yeah, the overall increase this is the cost to max are less than the original 1010 by a wide margin, but that's another topic for another post. So, yeah, he's saying that that because we saw some articles talk about a hundred thousand dollars to max out your character and so that number has been chopped uh but it's still a stupid amount stupid 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 amount of uh uh of money that would be required in order to you know kit yourself out with something that would be competitive on the leaderboards but you know it's it's it's, it's a single player game with some co-op and a leaderboard and all that stuff so you're competing against other players i don't know uh a <clears throat> hundred and ten thousand dollars to get you three whole villages in spain at the moment is there like a list is there like a zillow for villages in spain or something how does it compare to other mobile games like this it's probably it's probably on par honestly it's probably on par with a lot of um uh with a lot of other games out there uh that are already in this so yes to be honest they're empty well then i'll fill them up with 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 myself uh and yeah kotaka posted uh literally diablo mortal is far too good to be free article two days ago oh well yeah you know they you know they got they got contractual obligations to uh to me just kidding i'm totally making that up i don't really mean that i just can't only really know if they have any contractual obligations i'm just saying it looks like that uh <laughs> so are we hearing more about the, about it because of blizz well we've already known and you know what here here i think what we need to do we've known since the beginning that this was going to be a problem. And I, 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 I grabbed the timestamp here because I want you guys to see that we knew this in 2018 when it was first announced. We knew this was going to be a problem. The reaction tells you everything. Gameplay at your fingertips. We have new stories to tell, new skills for you to master. This is immediately after playing the trailer for Diablo Immortal. Stage in just a few minutes. For those of you who are here at BlizzCon, thank you. We are going to have, sorry, <laughs> we welcome you here to BlizzCon and there has never been a better time to be part of this incredible Blizzard community. We Cringe. have a demo of Diablo Immortal playable. <laughs> they set this guy up to die <laughs> in Hall D. And for those of you watching at home, visit DiabloImmortal.com for more information about Diablo Immortal. There has never been a better time to explore everything that Blizzard has to offer here at BlizzCon and alongside the rest of this incredible Blizzard community. As you wander the show floor, take time There's no to applause. say hi. There's no applause. It's so weird. It's so, it's, it's so obvious that everyone was like not on board with this. Nobody was on board with this. There was no thunderous applause, right? Stun shock, yeah. Stun shock. Uh, and apparently he's still dying on this hill, I guess. So <laughs> all they did was show it is still an image of a D and a four at the end. People might have at least been open to this. Yeah. It's like comedian who failed the jokes and lines. Still remember when they first announced it the entire room, but one guy was dead silent. Uh, talking about a mobile game in a room full of PC gamers. This incredible, this incredible community we are ready to exploit the fuck out of. You know what, though? This incredible community all stood by each other and fucking were like, we're not, we're not psyched for this. We're not pumped for this at all. So we talked about this a little bit yesterday about what, what they could have done different. And, uh, one of the things that came up was like, you know, instead of coming up and announcing it to a room full of PC gamers, which was fucking stupid, they could have, they could have just like silently announced it and been like, yeah, this is going to be something for, for China. Right. And then let 
the Chinese community like eat it up, and then everybody in the states would be like, "Whoa, we really want that game, but we didn't want to bring it to the states because it's not really westernized, you know, because it's you know the western the Asian market's a little bit different, you know, so all this stuff, right?" And they could have totally pitched it like that. And then they could have retooled a couple things and then relaunched it over here in the States and people would have played it the same way we play every other like South Korean or uh, or, or, or Chinese MMO where we know or a mobile game where we know what we're getting into. We know there's going to be a ton of, of taxation <laughs> on everything that we do. We expect that. But instead, they pitched it to us as if we were doing us a favor by making this mobile. And this is a long time ago. I don't want to harp on this part, right? Because we all, we're reliving the, reliving the moment, yes. <laughs> Is this an out of season April Fool's joke? Yeah. They could have done it, but yeah, like, like Lost Ark. Yeah, like Lost Ark. Like Lost Ark, we knew what we were, we were getting into when they brought it over here. Right, we played it and it was like, oh man, this is, this is a grind. This is a grind. I knew it was a grind. I didn't know how much of a grind it was, but it, I knew it was a grind. Uh, and they could have done something to mitigate some of that, but no, their their uh, uh, sure headedness, cockiness. Uh, pompousness, whatever you want to call it, their blindness, they get out there and they pitch this thing like they're doing us a favor and then wait for applause. So yeah, it's, uh, the game came out, it's exactly what we thought it would be and then, and people are upset about it. <laughs> what, what a surprise. What a surprise. Why do that when we know mobile is earning so much they don't care about us even though he was mad, they're earning bank. They're, of course they're earning bank. We got streamers who spent ten thousand dollars on shit just to see if they can. I mean, even even Shroud, even Shroud. Listen, sh listen to Shroud. Listen to Shroud. Give his perspective on this. Ridiculous. Listen, I'm on everyone else's side. The only difference here is that I have a problem and I can't stop paying for it. They fucking got me. They got me. But I'm right there with you. With you, with, like I'm right there with you on everyone's like thoughts about the game. I'm right there with you, but I can't fucking stop. They got me, dude. I So that's the way it is. Right? That's a that's addiction. That's what they're banking on. That's a, all of these games that have microtransactions, especially the ones that are that are designed to milk you. Where like every time you do anything, it's like, "Here, you could buy. Oh, you you successfully completed that mission. Do you want to buy something on top of that?" It's like, "No, I just just give me something. I won something, right? Didn't I?" People bitch about shit as they start spending money on it. Yeah. I mean, like Shroud is somebody who has a lot of money. You know, Asma Gold someone has a lot of money. That guy spent $10,000 just to see if he could. He spent a lot of money, right? All Blizzard really needs is like a good few hundred of those people spending ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, and they're they're turning like hella profits. And then later on, they'll go through and add a couple more things, maybe obsolete your gear just a little bit, right? Oh, now we have this new kind of gem that you could get. It's like a six star, or it's a five star elite, or some shit. <laughs> it it's, uh, it's, uh, if they add waifus, they'll make more monies. Yeah. Yep. Uh, also a tax write-off for them because it's a business expense. Yes, and yes, yes, it is. It is true. That's true. For somebody like Shroud, for somebody like Asmongold, for someone like me, it is a business expense for sure. Uh, but keep in mind, just so you guys know, a business expense doesn't necessarily mean you get the money back, right? Like when I write off things on my taxes, I don't get that money back, right? It just deletes that money from how much money I earned for the year. So it may put me in a better tax bracket. But it does not mean it's a rebate or anything like that. Streamers and content creators get enough money through revenue and other donations while doing it. Oh, yeah. A lot of them do. Absolutely. I mean, even me, I'm a small streamer, right? I'm a small streamer, but I get so many free games from you guys because you guys are generous. And I love you guys and you're the best. Whatever, whatever. Okay. Like it's, it's like I benefit greatly from this small community. Okay. I mean, I can't afford to throw $10,000 on Diablo Immortal or anything like that, but... <laughs> But still, such big PP viewers in this community, yeah. <laughs> but still, it's it's I mean it's, it's it's different different economies. But who cares, man? Like they're buying shit like crazy. Other people see that they're playing the game with like awesome gear, and then they go and download the game for free. They get sucked into buying a handful of things, and it's like it just keeps on going. And like he said, like he said, he's fucking stuck. They fucking got me. Yeah. <laughs> All 
right? PP strong. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, streamers obviously wouldn't do it if they didn't think they could recoup the money. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, of course they wouldn't do it if they couldn't recoup the money. Oh, yeah. Uh, why Diablo when you could play PoE? Well, PoE is not available on mobile right now. Uh, but imagine if it did, then there'd be there'd be good competition there. Uh, Blizzard's like the last the last uh, 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 ARPG to make it to mobile. Like everyone's got a mobile game already. There's already so many damn mobile ARPGs. Um, they just the first one with a uh, uh, did PO did PoE mobile just finally hit? No, did it soon? Yeah, soon, 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 soon. Um, uh, Josh Hayes did a, a good video on how deep it goes. Uh, let me. I'm just gonna pull this up. Just have no PoE mobile yet. That's what I thought. Okay, it's 44 In this minutes. Video, I'm going this to Let's just take a pause for a moment in the news and watch this video real quick. Show you a great game built on a terrible foundation. I was just kidding. That's all you need to hear, really. Given that guy's accent and delivery, I'm pretty sure he's telling the truth. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, time code it. <laughs> Could be wrong, but I've heard. No, I believe I believe you. I'm not trying to be an asshole about it. That's a great video, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm sure he goes deep on it. But even on the surface, even on the surface. You fucking got me. We know. Uh, although I would say PoE does have monetization scheme that is problematic in such a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, free to play games have to have some kind of way to make money, but there are ways to make money where you're not uh, pillaging. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> pillaging the rich? Fuck no. We need to do that more. It has to be done in a way that doesn't benefit fucking game companies. <laughs> Hot, what? Oh, maybe that's the idea. That's what we gotta do. Maybe, maybe, maybe the government comes up with a game that's really fun, but also has a whole lot of microtransactions that whales will spend on, and that way the money goes towards government officials like Pet Project or something like that. Yeah, we'll call it America's Army too. <laughs> that's called taxes, Mike. But taxes aren't fun. Taxes aren't fun. You say that uh, Blizzard's a modern day Robin Hood? Yeah, right. No, they're they're like they're like it's like two it's like two uh uh uh, uh what was that guy's name? What's the guy the sure sh 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 Robin Hood? There's Robin Hood, Robin of Loxley. There's uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Does he actually have a name? I don't think so. Uh, it's basically like having like two sheriffs of Nottingham. Essentially, taxes are made for the rich to keep their money, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. I arrest Simulator 2023, please, 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 please. So. Diablo Immortal is uh, having a bad time, having a great time in terms of revenue, having a bad time in terms of uh, reputation. Uh, I have, you know, I do follow, uh, I have a friend that I follow on, on industry friend. Uh, his name is uh, Pez Radar um, on Twitter. And, you know, I've known him for a while. He's a super chill guy. Um, oops, wrong, wrong thing. Hold on a second. Anyways, he's getting shit on um by and i don't know if i actually could pull this up but he works he works on on diablo and um yeah he works out and everything too so i mean I don't, I don't, can we show that he's working out he's really swole anyways he's got some comments somewhere in here where people are saying like they're basically just shitting on him for um uh for working on diablo immortal under his like workout posts like i know none of you guys would do that this is more of a commentary on like people that do that it's like why <laughs> why i get it the game sucks but that's why we're here that's why we have that's why we have chat that's why we have comments like bitching at him on his workout posts that's not gonna do anything about it that's fucking weird talk right there shitty people are shitty people it's true it's true i know it's none of you guys i just wanted to bring it up so you guys could be reminded that there's shitty people out there <laughs> more like king richard and sheriff of nottingham Ooh, okay i'm down with this we could come up with some good analogies here. I like this. Uh, so, <clears throat> moving on. <laughs> moving on to a, another game company that has been known to do shitty things in the past. So, uh, EA staff. So, this is a multi. This is a multi-stage story. So, if you know the, the, the if you know how the story comes out, I got to say this because some of you guys are too fast. Then just for just a second. Um. So. So EA staff, it's Pride Month, right? EA staff uh, uh threatened walkout over lack of statements during Pride Month. Now, now. On the surface, it seems like I was like, that seems weird. Because it's on the surface, it felt like, are they saying that because EA is not putting rainbows and shit on everything that they're gonna walk out? Like that seems kind of weird. Like the pressure a company to doing that. Because I feel like personally, I feel like Pride Month and every Black History Month and all these other months. I just want to pause for a moment to think, but you go, what the fuck is he gonna say about this? This is gonna be a clip. Now, 
and all these other months are just ways for marketing departments on these big corporations to find some way to make their fucking company and brand look hip or look like they're in touch with whatever 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 the hot button topic is they don't give a fuck they don't give a fuck they don't they don't absolutely man <laughs> geico celebrating black history month it's like really geico okay i guess so yeah sure it's fucking weird i guess you have to do that companies i only ever do that to make money absolutely 100 percent um and it's it, it, it's kind of like it's becoming this uh, uh like the pink ribbon for breast cancer research right we already know that the, the whole pink ribbon thing like it, deep down it's kind of a scam like you're throwing money at it hardly any of it goes to actual research for breast cancer blah 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 but it's it's come a thing it's like well if you don't support the pink ribbon then you're against breast cancer it's like well no i'm not i just wanted you know i just want to put the money somewhere it's actually going to make a difference right you're going to remind her that companies are not your friend they're doing shit to make you like them and buy their shit yeah yeah uh, try our Juneteenth ice cream, which is a real thing. That was a real thing. I don't think it's going to happen, but that was a real thing. Just check their Middle East headquarters to see their true colors. Oh, man. We already see it, too, uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, very, very lackluster Obi-Wan series. Um, <laughs> there's uh, 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 Moses Isley, I think. I can't remember her name. Moses something. Uh, but she plays a uh, 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 not a Sith character, an Inquisitor character, right? So a bad, a, you know, a bad, evil character. Uh, anyways, uh, there was this huge campaign. I was talking about how uh, if you don't like or if you don't approve of something, I don't know, basically saying that everyone's racist or something like that. And it felt very much like they were taking a small, small minority of voices uh, and they were trying to amplify them and turn them into a like some kind of PR move or something where it was like, let's make all this all this content and all these message uh, put out all this messaging and everything talk about everybody else's racist and that way it gives us an excuse to continue with this very boring character and <laughs> character story uh, <laughs> uh, completely unopposed right and it feels like this is the same thing it's like these companies are using these things as shields for them to do other things so anyways anyways uh so it's one of those you don't like x marvel character show therefore you're a racist yeah exactly and i watched the episode and i was like this is a bad character I mean, the overall series is pretty fucking bad, right? Overall series is pretty fucking bad, okay? She's not the worst part of it by any stretch. Um, but still, but still, it was like, it's like, no, the show could be bad and I could also not be racist. You could have both those things. So I thought that this EA thing was one of those situations where like a group of people are saying, well, we're gonna leave if you don't put a rainbow up. And actually it's not that. This is a, a group of folks, of people in the company who, I uh, want EA to not just uh, rainbow wash their brand, which is like I described, using the branding, using Black History Month, using Pride Month as a way for promote, promoting whatever kind of shit you want to promote, right? Uh, as a vehicle to do that. Um, they want them to actually back it up with actual like substance. Like you're not allowed to rainbow wash on social media and literally do nothing on the back end. Right. And I agree with that. If you're not going to do anything on the back end, then don't rainbow wash. Then don't come out and be like, yeah, man, Black History Month's amazing. And they literally know nothing for Black History Month. Just, just don't talk about it then. <laughs> if you're not going to do anything, then fucking get the banner off. Rainbow wash. Is that like a tie dye? I, you know, that was a new one for me too, but it makes sense in the context of how other companies uh, co opt um, actual, like meaningful uh, observation months, weeks, days, whatever for their own benefit. Uh, they're basically saying, we know what you want. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Company actually doing something on substance. So come on. Yeah. Well, well, so, um, the walkout, uh, it says this is the walkout over hypocrisy called off after leadership says it won't adopt a company wide rainbow logo for a month. So instead of, instead of coming up with, <laughs> with a bunch of last minute things, or maybe, maybe, maybe just presenting the things that they already had been working on, for uh, uh for that month instead they decided to just Dino. not rainbow wash <laughs> Teclan said sorry dad the kids are here and he closed the door <laughs> he's looking out for me man uh how does this rank of the blizzard ah the blizzard diversity tool we never fucking talked about that and i wanted so bad to talk about did we talk about it i don't think so god <sighs> Breaking news, let him speak. No. <laughs> uh, at least some of your PR budget to charity for tax evasion purposes. So EA did respond. They did respond to this. 
uh, and they said, uh, you know, they came through says, as a company, we are united that trans rights are human rights, women rights are human rights. We, our support is unwavering uh, for our people, our players, and our LGBTQ plus communities. Uh, and they went basically went along to say that they are um, filled with compassion and humility and all this stuff. Uh, and also note that see, June is Pride Month and at EA Global Celebration. Uh, they also note somewhere in here where, uh, let me see, Pride Month has its origins of standing up because community justice. This year's theme chosen by a Pride Board, authentically proud, you belong, da 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 Okay, can't find it here. Um, but they came out saying, that's a hot pink. Uh, they came out <laughs> basically saying that, yeah, no, we do support all these things. But we're not going to white wa- or rainbow wash our logo, and that's pretty much it. Meanwhile, my uh, Mikey Barr is just perpetually annoyed with Activision. Is he? Uh, corp- corporal cor- copy pasta. <laughs> Netflix just announced Dragon Age anime. Is that not EA who owns the IP? Um, EA to to Bioware. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, so they came out. They're not going to. They're not going to be. It's not going to be a, wa- a walkout. They they're not going to put rainbows and shit all over their uh, all over their logo because they don't actually do anything to support it. Um, and uh, uh, and then that's they're going to. I guess they're just going to revisit it again next year when. I don't know, the month comes around and they have nothing planned for it. But frankly, man, like I said, like some of these companies, like, you know, like if you're not actually going to do anything, uh, then just don't do anything. <laughs> like, don't, don't like half ass it or like, you know, say you're going to do something like you're going to pledge or something like that. And then just not, uh, they took to see their employees still care. Yeah, they did. Um, there was, there's another facet to this here, uh, that I'm, I'm forgetting about. Most people planning a walk up mysteriously lost their jobs. <laughs> um, oh fuck. There's another game that we talked about. Another game company we talked about that did something similar. I can't remember. And I can't remember. Damn it. I wish I wrote the, wrote, wrote this down. Um, they were used to making money. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, so they're, they're not going to, uh, uh, rainbow wash their shit. Why do companies also need to support everything in our time right now? Everybody needs to support everything. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of, you know, I'll tell you why. It's because game companies are doing this shit and it needs to stop where they're like, your character name is the color of your console. Plus the last thing you ate. Ours is blue toast. What's yours? This is, this is the official, this is the official electronic arts. Like it was cute when like, Wendy's did it, right? Because Q and Wendy's does it. Discord plays kind of a weird, like kind of weird role like that. Like they're kind of, but this is like, this is like Facebook shit. Social media guys got earned their pay. It's garbage. It's garbage stuff though. I mean, like, where are the where are my foodies at? Quote with your favorite in, favorite game time snack. Like, what the fuck? Like they're trying, yeah, they're trying to create engagement, but they're acting like people. You know, <laughs> like this is why we have so many of these problems with people trying to tur- turn with some folks trying to make uh, uh, trying to use companies as their vehicle for whatever movement they're pushing. Right. Is because they act like fucking people like just let them be robots on the fucking Internet. <laughs> like let them be robots. Just tweet about out- the upcoming games or something. You don't got to You don't got to do this weird shit. Like and there's so many game companies that do this. Super out of touch. Just be just be a game company who give money to political parties so the players can just play games and I have to be playing game tied to the party. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that too. Yep. Gotta be hip, you boomer. Nah, fuck that. This is boomer shit. I don't care what anybody, this is boomer shit, man. Like, if this is borderline, yeah, it's, it's doing game, all eyes on even, sure. Like, this is fine. It's a game thing, right? Game related thing. What's your current mood? Answer with memes only. Bro, who's running this shit? Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> fuck it, shut the fuck up. People respond. Yeah, just, yeah, just whatever. By hilarious, because because <laughs> uh, uh, it looks more like bots, and then they just shove away out random EA games they feel about upcoming games. Yeah, it's a market ploy to make them feel more human to win loyalty or some shit. Yeah, it, 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 it just, like, there's there's a lot of problems with, like, game companies trying to be people on social media, uh, which opens them up to a lot of ridicule uh, when they don't support the things that the people that they try to cater to also support, right? Anytime like some big thing happens, right? Whatever that thing might be, if they if people can somehow find a way to relate it to a game company, like do you support this thing that's happening over here or whatever? And a game company company responds, it's like now that company's taking a position that may not resonate with all of its users. Now, all users, all of well, all of its users and all of its uh uh, uh employees. Um 
and in in, in uh in a lot of just in a lot of instances it's like it's like okay well you don't support uh you know um the women's right to choose well then you don't support basic human rights it's like well how about you just don't take a stance on anything ever <laughs> and don't be a fucking person on the internet and then you'll never have to face these problems and you'll never have to face any of this shit just shut the fuck up and run your company <laughs> shut the fuck up friday apparently it is it's funny when you see things like this and you see the cyberpunk don't worry uh no more delays book that holiday and then the day after the social media guy is saying we're delaying yeah if they talk to you like they're a person then there are people who will perceive them to be people i've done so many surveys that ask uh about how i think a shit tons of companies uh as if they were people it's part of the current a corporate meta mm-hmm yeah, I like to see a company toss in jail that's never going to parasocial relationships. Yeah, with companies, with companies, with companies, man. Like, it's... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, once it happens, it's, uh, uh, like Final Fantasy XIV's official Twitter does their thing. They post the important info. Then they reply to the occasional posts within one hour of posting. I prefer that. Yeah, that's fine. Weird stuff like this. Like, that's, that's, uh, like, stop. Like, stop. It's cringe. It's cringe. It's cringe, super cringe. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe Zoomers are kind of like, oh, that's so awesome that this game company talks just like me. And I don't fucking know. They don't, I, don't want, I don't want to play Zoomers like that. Zoomers are smarter than that. <laughs> they fucking know better. Uh, and then you have this at the other end. Oh, what's this? This at the other end. This is... Uh... <laughs> Our pride, oh, here we go. Look, our pride controller features 34 flags representing the many LGBTQ communities. Meet some of the amazing people who inspire the design and learn what each flag means. So there's something here. There's some substance here. They don't have to do this, but there's substance here. They want to represent it fine, right? They're doing something. It says no one asked for this. It says no one asked if you reply, but here we are. <laughs> That's a pretty funny. But <laughs> is this the actual design? Holy shit. <laughs> fucking lot <laughs> yeah like, there's substance here though like they're doing something uh the game gaming should be a matter of pride oh do they have like a whole oh it's like a whole video thing or something oh no no it's not oh it's gonna do this thing it's gonna do the whole yeah the, all that stuff how much is it oh it comes in black and white it comes in all the color oh it's oh, highlights all the flags oh okay i see i see i see you could get your controller that way oh we can only get one no, uh, that's enough. Anyways, anyways. Why well, they put a lot of graphics in this bitch? Holy shit. <laughs> Funny enough, the replies uh, weren't really in favor of Xbox there. Yeah, I mean, they don't necessarily, like I said, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to do it. Like, I get it. It's great for a company to, like, support by doing things, right? By representing, by putting cool things on there to represent the players that play their game, right? But if you're just going to put a rainbow over your shit and be like, happy pride, that's kind of it. <laughs> that's kind of it you'll be really cool i don't know no there's no uh, another comment there people didn't seem to like that reply oh whatever i mean yeah it just plays into the whole companies acting like like people thing please people act like people please other people don't non-people don't act like people stupid uh i thought it was funny it was like who cares yeah it's funny when they tell people off though yeah, there's there's a number of there's some things like that like happen sometimes I, I I do think are pretty good singers and shit. But anyways, 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 anyways. So, uh, I fuck. I guess I guess on the same lines. I didn't know I put this right in uh, uh in order like this. But this is this is this is actually. Hello. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's just hello. Like like that. Hello. <laughs> Quick, where's she from? Quick, where's she from? Ah, uh, come on. You already got you got a got clue. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want my engagement to be more negativity. That's how you do it. UK, English, London, probably. Uh, okay. Hello, guys. <laughs> All right. So check this out. I thought this was kind of interesting, actually. Check Hello. this out. Hello. Look at the sexism on this website, please. Crazy British woman. Wow. Okay. Crazy British female. No, nope, not allowed that either. Crazy British girl. No, nope, not allowed that. Crazy British lady. No, not even allowed that. Crazy British male. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, I don't know how, like, <laughs> how something like this 
has like uh, gone undiscovered for so long. Uh, I feel I feel like everybody puts this, like crazy. I'm a crazy streamer, right? They'll put something like that in their thing, but apparently that's a, it's real. Uh, and it even goes as far as somebody did some tests uh, here where they put in. Yeah, it says I was just testing a few different things. Seems to flag anything that could be considered negative towards women. And as I just learned, also towards trans folk like myself. No self-deprecating humor unless you're a cis male, I guess. So it's a dumb trans girl plays games badly. This title may be conflict with moderation policy. A dumb trans guy. Guy plays games badly. Uh, stupid girl plays games badly. <laughs> stupid guy play a game badly. <laughs> uh, it's been a thing for a while, sadly. What well, hasn't really ga gained any kind of traction or anything. But um, but what, what's what's funny is, is like it's like how lazy of like a moderation tactic this is. Um, I don't know how this how how this I guess it's a combination of words or something like that 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 uh, they don't allow. Maybe crazy, and then anything with girl, woman, trans. I guess trans also. That's a red flag word. Like this is really exposing what how their system works, uh, and it's very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the nationality stuff can flag a chat as well. You can only be dumb and crazy if you're a guy. Yeah, we have a monopoly on that shit. So now you said my stream tolerance is just professional idiots play X games. See? Can't do that. Boy, well, professional idiots. Well, idiots is kind of general neutral, though. Uh, girl, woman, man, card door. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes sense that they take the time to moderate common things people would use as an insult, but people typically care if people call someone a crazy girl, but no one cares that much if you flame a guy. It's lazy, but it's lazy, but it shouldn't belong in the title of the stream because the only people that can edit that are the people who are streamers or their moderators that they've allowed to do so. So this, this again, this goes back to just kind of lazy moderation tactics where they don't really look into how this can affect every, every forward facing uh, uh, line of text. Like this is something that you know, they should be able, come on, like, they should be able to put this in. If you're a stupid girl, put it in. If you're a dumb trans guy, you should be able to put it in. If you're a dumb trans girl, you should be able to put it in, all right? That's the bottom line. You're the one putting it in there, right? Some self-deprecating humor is fine. <laughs> but no, that's just how their, how their system works. I thought that was so interesting. How did this go unseen? Not fully unseen, because I'm sure some of you guys have seen it, but this had no traction for 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 so long. I, well, I don't know how long it's been a thing, but um, if you're mean to, to to girl, it's tragic. It means you're if if you're mean to a guy, it's funny. Yeah. So, uh, 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 um, <laughs> hey, how many of you guys watch Giant Bomb stuff? How many of you guys watch Giant Bomb stuff? Sorry, Stream. I'm not approving that one. <laughs> you used to? Who? Who? Never? Who? Not since the OOs? Dang. Never? Dang. Dang. I kind of figured. I kind of figured. Who? <laughs> it's been a really long time. All right. So, uh, Giant Bomb is a uh, community, one of the earliest, largest video game communities. Um... It was it was it was Game Breaker before Game Breaker and well after Game Breaker, uh, and they had one of their original founders leave. God, would you go fucking? Would you give me just a fucking second to get there? God damn it! God damn it! Co-host, slow down. Sniped your topic. <laughs> so yes, Jeff Gertzman. Jeff Gertzman laughed. Have you heard? So Game Breaker, but successful. Yeah, Game Breaker, but they didn't have to resort to Jessica Nagiri gifts. Uh, I don't know, Gertzman was fired from GameSpot? I don't know what he's doing. But anyways, he's one of the last people uh, who, who is that? Yeah, I figured this was going to be a thing. <laughs> anyways, he's, he's let's just say he's the Gary Gannon of Game Breaker, okay? Or maybe the, the Josh, a.k.a. Lore of Game Breaker, all right? Um, he was one of, the, one of the big dogs there. And while I don't watch any Game Breaker stuff, I, or Game Breaker stuff... <laughs> He's no AK Mike B though. That's why I said Josh and Gary, not me. <laughs> 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 
So, anyways, uh, he's leaving after 15 years. Uh, it looks look like a quarter. I went to his Twitter account, and it looks like he is starting up his own uh, podcast. Uh, I went and listened to his first one. Not the entire thing. It's like two and a half hours. Um, so he does have his own thing going. It, so it's not like he's leaving to go join the other cast that left last year around the same time, who were original founders, um, to start their own game company next something. I don't know the, know the name. So that's what people assumed he would go, but. You know, he's got his own podcast now, so maybe not. And he's got a Patreon, too. So it sounds like he's uh, going to be putting down roots and starting his own thing for a little bit. Why does everyone always forget about Shaznit? He was cool, too. Because he goes under the radar, man. Shaznit, he's under the radar. He's hosting shit. Slide up under there. Got a nice, nice, nice comfy job at Blizzard. Doing what he loves. Fucking guy. Uh, we, hate, we hate him because he's, because he's successful. Anyway, so that also means that other people are coming back. Uh, uh, Dan, Dan, uh, Dan Reichert, who, uh, uh, used to be part of the crew is now back. Um, you guys don't know who that is. Uh, and then this is Tam more, Tam more something, Tam, Tam more, uh, Hussain, Hussein. And, uh, you know, I don't know who this is, but he's pretty fucking funny. This is his first, uh, his first, uh, uh discussion talking about joining, uh, Giant My Bomb. My inspiration has always been GameSpot and Giant Bomb and the people that came and went through each part of it. Um, people like Jeff, people like, you know, uh, Brad, Alex, Vinny, everyone else here now. Like, I've I've enjoyed being uh, a person in the community and then a person who worked uh, in, at a sister site. And to get here right now... When we started having discussion, it was there was a lot of things in my mind that were kind of like, is this something that I want to do as someone who has that background? And ultimately, it came down to one question, and I really sat down. And I thought about that question, and the question was, as a Muslim, how can I make it incredibly hard for myself to get through any more airports? <laughs> and I thought the best way to do it was to associate myself with the name Giant Bomb. <laughs> so every time the FBI Googles my bitch ass, I am gonna get fucking kicked off every goddamn flight. For <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know who he is, but uh, he's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> so anyway, so he's joining on as one of the creative directors for the site. So I mean, that's I mean, that's a pretty good introduction for me, anyways. Uh, that has been a long running joke of the giant bomb community. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Like he 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 jokes, but this shit's like true. Uh, I don't know how it is now, but I know that um, when I was for Comp, you say one of the guys worked for me. His last name was Khan. Uh, and so <clears throat> Khan, uh, he's he was from, uh, uh, he was from a oh, fuck. I don't want to fuck up where he was from, but it was, it was a country that was, that was under, I don't know. Uh, it, it was a country that people associated with like terrorists who bombed at night or who flew the planes on nine 11 or some shit. Anyways, because his last name was Khan, uh, it, his actually, I think his whole name actually matched with one of the people on the terrorist watch list because it was a common name. Khan is like Smith, okay? <laughs> so, so every time he'd go go fly back to his home country to go with his family or some shit, right? Go visit some uh, extended family and shit. He'd always get nailed for it. So it's real. It's true. It does happen, but it's fucking hilarious. Giant bomb, fucking great. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember where he's from, and I don't. I don't want to say for sure. I don't know if it's Afghanistan, Pakistan, or anywhere in the uh, in the in the Middle East or South Asia or anything like that. I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyways, his last all that matters was his last name was Khan, and he was brown. That's all it took. And then and then of course he would sometimes grow his beard out, and he would have this huge like ISIS beard, like huge fucking beard. And then he <laughs> he would fucking get stuck at the airport. Oh man. Uh, so I see Kirk of Spock, y'all. I see there's a problem with anyone named Ahmed, Mohammed, Zaid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Minor that TSA has never caught or stopped a terror, terror attack. Well, can you prove it? <laughs> uh, Smith would be Khan. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm just trying to relate it to some folks. Uh, Dan Riker mentioned briefly that the rest of the company didn't really allow for any of his creativity, and that sounds like a big reason for him to come back to GB. Oh, okay. That's uh, Thank you. A little bit of insight there. Um, let me guess random search all right yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much um so uh, uh buzzfeed which is a site that we all are familiar with if you're on the internet you know who buzzfeed is uh buzzfeed had this um uh well buzzfeed had a bad week uh, 
for stocks. And uh, why it matters to you is because we're used to seeing BuzzFeed articles all over the place. And um, uh, this is like a bad sign for not just them, but for like m online media in general. So it says here, it says Buzz blah, blah. BuzzFeed stock plunged Monday, putting the company's market cap below $350 million AOL, AOL paid. Uh, let's do this. Let's just let's actually let's go pull up the actual stock here. Uh, so we take a look at it. And you can see here, it's now $2.06. If you look at the five-year, uh, back here it was, this is 2021. This is six months ago. <laughs> six months ago, it was at it was at $10, and then it immediately took a dip. Uh, and it was kind of cruising, and then it dropped again. From June 3rd to June 6th, it dropped an additional, I mean, it's almost half that it fell off again. Um, and the reason why is because uh, they had this thing in, in, uh, uh, thing in called... Um, uh, where they lock your home. They probably have the, the buzzwords in here somewhere, not buzzword, but the basically what they do is they lock in your shares for a certain amount of time before you're able to actually sell it or do anything with it. Uh, and these are for employees and executives. And after that term is up, then you're allowed to freely do whatever you want with it. But it gives them an opportunity to have a little bit of liquidity, a little bit of runway. Uh, so it looks like they, they could kind of stay afloat while their stock kind of, kind of uh, uh, balances out a little bit. Um, and so in this case, basically all of them sold their stock. <laughs> so it drove the price down to effectively nothing. I mean, $2 each, uh, and it's just not looking good for, for, uh, for Buzzfeed. Um, they, here it is right here. It says, this is their first financial, uh, qu quarterly results. Uh, I don't have the numbers highlighted. Let me see. Yeah, they have a revenue of $91.6 million. Um, but they also had a, let me see, net loss. Here we go. They had a revenue of $91.6 million, but the net loss was $44.6 million. This is a quarter. <laughs> so it, it, people just don't have, people that even work there have no, uh, uh, no faith, zero faith in the, uh, uh, the quality of the stock that they were given when they signed up and they all sold it. So um, this is a bad sign for BuzzFeed. Um, I know, and I know that we like to handle BuzzFeed a lot. And for the most part, BuzzFeed can die. Um, BuzzFeed news, I believe, right? BuzzFeed is a BuzzFeed news, right? Or am I getting confused with another news site? Another like stupid meme site that turned into a news site. Um, do the news buzz in? If not, they could buzz off. Hey, so the guy they sent to get a coffee at the one time hit, uh, uh, that time hit when everybody else was busy selling their stock got screwed. Yeah. Yeah. That one guy who went, who left. BuzzFeed News was good. Yeah, BuzzFeed News. Thank you. I wasn't sure if it was because it was this is like Daily Mail or a bunch of other like stupid names. Um, I can has hamburger news. I don't fucking know. Uh, but yeah, BuzzFeed News uh, was pretty good, but they're a separate entity to this. So I don't think so. BuzzFeed itself could probably die, but you know, BuzzFeed News is probably still around and they, they put some good investment money into their stuff. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's not looking good for them. Uh, at all when you lose 44.6 million dollars and everybody sells their stock uh, it's not looking like it's something that's going to last particularly long uh, is the onion considered a real news site now <sighs> yeah kind of it's more believable looks like a crypto stock line don't talk to me about that right now <laughs> <sighs> that would be true if r slash not the onion exist would exist yeah 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 anyway so uh, uh moving on <laughs> uh so we had an instance of uh, we've had a couple instances that we've covered here where war thunder the tank game um people will go to the far reaches to win an argument uh online uh and, and even 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 if it means sharing state secrets. <laughs> More lead classified documents. This has happened six times now. Six, six, six times this has happened now. Uh, at two British Challenger take leaks, one Eurocopter uh, Tiger attack uh, helicopter, uh, one French tank, and another Chinese tank. Uh, so two Chinese tanks, two British tanks, uh, two, uh, one Eurocopter Tiger attack helicopter, uh, and then one French tank. So, 
It's not even it's not even just one country and that blows my mind. Yeah, all the secrets are just laid out. Uh War Thunder fans are seriously insane with this shit. I do like the response to that. Uh what was the response? Um the US Army is glad this game isn't popular in NA. <laughs> Uh, li literally classified documents leaks over yeah so but just so you know like just if you want to be a pedantic just a little bit not everything was not everything that all of these other games uh or all these other instances of secrets that were leaked were like super secret right like there's secret then there's top secret okay you can have a secret clearance and that stuff it's like yeah it's kind of a secret probably shouldn't tell your buddies right but it's not necessarily hard to dig up and there's top secret, which is like, do not share. We'll probably kill you if you do. Uh, and a lot of these secrets, like the penetration value of the armor on the Chinese tank or some shit, like that kind of stuff, you could probably find in other ways. But it's different when like they're literally just giving you the information. <laughs> like, yeah, sure. You could go through other means to like go and try to find this information, or you could just start a fight with somebody in the forums or in the game and get that information that way. Top secret top secret is treason, secret is water cooler speak. Yeah, thank you. Pretty sure most people in the US know that if you leak anything uh, as a junior enlisted, your respective investigation agency will arrest you as soon as you hit submit. That's what we think will happen. It's happened in DCS forums. Yeah, so it's it's a thing. It happens. It happens. Um, <clears throat> so the weapon in question was a DTC, uh, 1025 anti-tank round fielded by the modern day Chinese military, also known as kinetic energy penetrator. Its job is to punch through metal and breach the internal compartments of a tank and knock it out if uh, uh, knock it out of action. As such, capabilities are closely guarded secret, or at least they were until someone on the War Thunder, War Thunder forums got into an argument and needed to prove a point. And that's how these things all start. <laughs> That's how these things pretty much all start. Uh, <laughs> I say I spoke with Clunkers about it, and he said that the CIA security people, as well as the public, are laughing their asses off. The ones who aren't laughing, the captain of the, uh, the sergeant who leaked it to the War Thunder forums. Yeah, yeah. Well, if they ever discover who it was that actually did it, <clears throat> uh, see, UK uh, does have the Official Secrets Act, which covers sensitive information. Do they really care about the specific classification to those? Uh, UK ones get slaps. All right. Yeah. If every time I got classified documents about tanks from game nerds online, I'd almost have a dollar, which isn't much, but it's weird that it's almost a dollar. Yeah. No, no. I mean, six times that's 30 cents. You used to be able to pay for a phone call with that. Uh, that was back when we had pay phones, which they don't really exist anymore. So yeah, it's, uh, 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 uh you know, just fucking loose lips sink ships or whatever. Like, just don't talk about your state secrets in a video game. Maybe. Just be like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Just stop there. Ah, right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Let mom pay for it. He just wanted to take a selfie in his sub. What? Uh, in this case, they sink tanks. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in, in news that is surprising to basically no one, and I don't think we covered this last week. I don't think we covered this last week, uh, our last episode. We may or may not have. So so stop me if you've heard this. Because we talked about it. I know we talked about it on stream, but it was probably not on news. But... A former OpenSea employee uh, was uh, has been charged with money laundering. So I don't think we talked about this on the news. And this is real. This is justice.gov. All right. So this is a former employee of NFT Marketplace charged in first ever digital asset, asset insider trading scheme. Are you shocked? Are you surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Not on news. Yes, on stream. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so this is a funny one. Uh, the uh, The person in question... No way. I know. Give me all the shock, Pikachu. Uh, this is on OpenSea. OpenSea uh, is one of the largest. You know, it is the largest NFT platform. Uh, and this employee was uh, purchasing NFTs and then helping get them featured using like a collection of, uh, of untraceable wallets. I mean, they're, they're, you could trace them. Uh, and... He was making a profit off of it. And so the argument came up, which was they sell government secret NFTs on OpenSea. Yeah, but now and now like the person who bought it owns it. <laughs> What's the government gonna do? <laughs> Someone took a picture and then they sold it. It's art, man. All right, so it says right here, NFTs might be new, but this kind of scheming is not. 
And so it says part of his employment. Oh shit, I lost it. It says as part of his employment, Chastain was responsible for selecting NFTs to be featured on OpenSea's homepage. OpenSea kept confidential the identity of featured NFTs until they appeared on its homepage. After the NFT was featured on OpenSea's homepage, the price buyers were willing to pay for that NFT. And other NFTs made by the same NFT creator typically increased substantially. From at least in or about June 2021, or at least in or about September 2021, Chastain used OpenSea's confidential business information about what NFTs were going to be featured on its homepage to secretly purchase dozens of, NF dozens of NFTs shortly before they were featured. Add those NFTs were featured on, on OpenSea, Chastain sold them at profits of two to five times its initial purchase price. To conceal the fraud, Chastain conducted these purchases and sales using anonymous digital currency wallets and anonymous open accounts on OpenSea. <laughs> So one of the arguments that I see pop up here is uh, uh, somebody said that because because this person was in a position where they were uh, helping helping build and curate for a company that was printing millionaires on a daily basis, that they were not given uh, an adequate amount of compensation to prevent them from committing these crimes. This is the argument that I read, right? It's a real argument by by real people. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> scammers on every level of employment. Yeah. So it, it's 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 a situation where um, I guess they decide to take take matters in their own hands. Give me money or I'm gonna do a crime. Yeah. Was the guy doing the job? Yes. Uh, then he was happy with the compensation. He was clearly happy enough to make enough extra money for himself. Uh, using anonymous wallets and then end up getting fucking nailed for it. Fucking weird. Um, speaking of weird, actually, I have this, 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 uh, somebody sent me this LinkedIn. Yes, we're going to LinkedIn right now. I'm going to read this to you because it's, uh, yeah, just listen. So <clears throat> this is a real post. This is from two weeks ago. It says the year is 2030. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon. You've just finished mining 30 obsidian, obsidian ore playing Crypto Crush Saga, a match three mobile game. You open uh, open the Elder Chains online uh, and feel a rush of excitement. Your buddy from school has spent the last two years becoming a master blacksmith, and he has agreed to turn 10 obsidian ore into obsidian battle staff, a huge upgrade over the mithril mace you've been wielding for the last weeks. It'll take him an hour or so. In the meantime, you hop into Clash of Guilds and use the remaining obsidian upgrade, obsidian to upgrade your town hall to the next level. That should keep your village safe for now. You wish you could fast forward time to tonight. Your guild plans uh, to go for a deep run into the wilderness in old school rune chains, and your process Aspects of successful run and great loot have never been better. All members have been spending the past two weeks grinding for better weapons, and you've agreed through a vote to use the guild treasury to buy everyone a new set of red dragon hide armor. Tonight's objective is to kill the level 128 frost giant hiding in the cave of sorrow. He has a 5% chance of dropping an immaculate orb of brilliance, of which there are currently only four in existence. That math does not work out. Uh, the orb can be used as a power source in an upcoming space exploration game and should give you your guild a great, a great advantage and reaching distant galaxies first. A 5% drop rate is low, uh, but you're feeling optimistic. In the distance, you hear a faint blockchain doesn't bring anything new to games. You shrug and join your friends in the Discord voice channel. Life is good. Blockchain gaming. I thought this was a critique on blockchain gaming. But in reality, it's a life is good on blockchain gaming post. He named something like five games with a potential future game. This doesn't sound fun. No part of this sounds. And also, you know, we, we should talk a lot of these like, you know, NFT bros who talk about how NFTs are going to make your games better. When this guy is so far off, 5% drop rate, only for in existence. Does this speak to the number of players that actually play blockchain based games? Because that doesn't make any fucking sense. And then it says 5% drop rate is low. What fucking game are you playing? What game are you fucking playing? <laughs> Where a 5% drop rate is low, the market would be flooded. It'd be flooded with these things. 5% drop rate is great. It's like fucking a board lever off of, uh, uh, and wow, higher drop rate or lower drop rate than that. See, so it sounds like you would have to grind all your games to get anywhere. This is exactly what he's describing. He's describing that, uh, he's saying that you don't have to play one game. You could carry things from one game to another. Let's forget about all the other, 
uh, uh, all the other like mutual like data share that would have to happen between big companies in order to make this a reality. It's just not going to fucking happen, right? We could see games that have a metaverse already built into the franchise or something with a, a, a publisher or something where they already have some kind of control over a number of different facets so they can say, yeah, let's make this something that can carry over different games, right? I could see them doing that. You don't fucking need blockchain technology to do that, though. You really, really, really don't. You just don't. You're not going to get cooperation amongst all these different major game publishers and, and game dev studios to create games that have this interchangeable thing that's going to have any kind of actual use, okay? Like, he talks about currency you could pick up from one, or, sure, okay, or, that's just an icon and a number. Okay, that could be transferred from one game to another. I'm sure, maybe, if both games support the same kind of ore, if both games, their lore has the same overlapping resources, unless you got to do some kind of transmutation with the ore that you bring in from one game into another, but they have to build that feature in to both games to transmute it from one to another. This is fucking stupid. You missed the part where someone hacks the confidence, uh, the, uh, the confidence voters and validates one, drops another rare item, crash the market. Mm. I got a lot of different Sony Microsoft piece of players to have uh, multi-platform play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is what Roblox is going for. Many games in a game, uh, many games in a game all linked. Yeah. I mean, Second Life, VR Chat, Roblox, all these games are trying, are, are, are they all have their already existing uh, interchangeable community because they have these like meta rooms and the meta games that exist within those games themselves. Like this fucking guy is trying to turn, trying to say that like all these game companies by 2030 or whatever. We're gonna work together on this shit. Come on, dude. He's basically talking about U.S. dollars. Um, <clears throat> well, in this case, he's talking about moving items from one game to another. Fucking five, six items. Anyways, real post. He really meant it. Uh, he's saying that he's being brigaded by a bunch of people or whatever. But no, man. Like it's just bad take. Bad take, man. Super bad take. Um. Anyways, yeah. So <laughs> weird NFT news. <laughs> in lighter news. The issue is people are selling the idea of things like this. Yes, exactly. People are selling the idea that you can get rich doing these things. Um, he didn't even talk about any classes, I know. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot of the things that are that are presented by people who support blockchain technology are things that already exist or can already be uh, implemented without having to rely on a new type of technology. Like I said, there's probably going to be a use for NFTs in the future, sure. But the way they're presenting it right now, it's like you're only going to take away you're only going to make things more difficult to add the things that you're talking about with less with less gain from the company so what what who is really winning here i buy an item in a game that can be transferred to another game well i have to wait for the other game to get built right the company now no longer has the ability to control that item because they're allowing you to take it off the platform so there's no incentive for them there's no incentive for the company because <laughs> they lose control of the item. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, and if these actually have uses that might be cool, but no one's going to care because people are turning it into clown tech. Yeah, clown tech. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of clown tech, I was waiting for that. Thank you, guys. USB-C will be mandatory for phones sold in the EU by autumn 2024. That's only in a year. Okay? This is real. Shit tech, fucking iPhone lightning cable. This is going to force Apple into ditching the fucking lightning plug. USB 2.0, by the way, uh, lightning plug in order to get everything I have now has USB-C. Every tab, I have a tablet, not every tablet, I don't have a lot of tablets, I have one tablet. <laughs> my Samsung tablet, USB-C. Uh, my, my charger, the charger for my phone uh, stand, you can't see it, okay? It's The cable's not long enough. Is USB-C for my iPhone. <laughs> wireless charging only. I do have wireless charging, but still. Uh, that's what they'll do, actually. They'll make it, yeah, they'll make it without ports. They'll, they're gonna, they're just gonna get away from the plug altogether, which is fine, but still, even that is kind of shit. Then you gotta, you gotta charge it. I'm gonna wireless charge my phone while the phone's bouncing all over the place. Um, except these cookies. What is this? That, that is the only exemption. Is this, this is how my iPhone 7 because I refuse to give up my headphone jack. <laughs> Uh, wireless charging is so wasteful. Is it? 
Thank God I want Edward. You're welcome. No, no problem. Thanks for the segue. I appreciate it. I was waiting for that. Uh, and, and and lastly, lastly, oh, news went on. We got we got full news out of today. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> Let me cue this up here. Uh, so, uh, so uh, 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 a movie came out recently. <laughs> Twice. Can anybody guess what that is? Hmm. 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 The movie's called Top Gun. Morbid time. That's right. <laughs> So, Morbius came out. Uh, movie is apparently bad. I'm not gonna watch it to find out. I trust you guys. Um, the memes were out of control. The memes were out of control, like super out of control. So out of control that Sony was like, "Yeah, let's bring it back to theaters. People will obviously like it." Um, it's not a bad movie. Well, that's like your opinion, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they brought it back to movie theaters and it flopped. It, it flopped again, again, actually. Uh, they brought it back. It says right here, it says uh, it made $85,000 on a thousand screens. So it's like 4,000 something. I don't, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> you like the movie to be honest? I mean, that's cool. If you like the movie, that's fine. You can like, you can like bad movies. No one's going to judge you for it. I like bad movies too, okay? Chronicles of Riddick is 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 legendary in my book, all right? Nothing, one of the greatest movies ever made, one of the greatest sci-fis ever made, Chronicles of Riddick, all right? And I know people don't agree with that. Some people don't. But those people are wrong. I like Sharknado. You could like Sharknado, it's fine. <laughs> that is like 10 tickets in the theater, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike said he thinks Battlefield Earth is a masterpiece. I've seen parts of that movie, and no, it's not. Uh, so, yeah, they brought it back, and it failed again. Uh, Jared Leto actually posted a video of him. Oh, God, it was so cringe. Oh, man. I'm not even going to find it. He posted a video of him, like, pretending to look through, like, a Morbius 2 script or something. Um and it basically killed the meme. Oh, God, it's just cringe. It just sucks when a movie... Uh, you know, I... I, I I used to really like Jared Leto um, from, there was a couple movies, but one of the ones that stood out to me was uh, that gun running video or movie with the Nicolas Cage. Uh, he was a uh, God, God of War, God, God, something, something like that. Lord of War. Thank you. Now it's not God of War. Yeah. Lord of War. Yeah. Lord of War. Um, I thought that Jared Leto was, uh, was he in that? Wasn't he? Yeah, he was in that. He was, uh, he was the little brother or something like that. Um, Anyway, so there was a couple of movies that I saw early on where I was like, I was like, man, this guy is good. And then, and then 30 Seconds to Mars came out. And I was like, oh man, this is excellent. But man, some of the movies have been put out re lately. It's kind of like, what the fuck, man? Like, this is some weird shit. Uh, hold on. Here we go. Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, fuck. What are you reading? Uh, nothing. Nothing really. Just, uh, I don't know. What are you reading? Oh, well. And then they play the meme. It's not even the right usage of the meme. It's not even the right usage of the meme. <sighs> funny. Not funny! <laughs> Max said, not funny! <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, so, meme dead. It's funny. It's not funny! <laughs> There's not the next. There's not the next. That was it. That's the news. No, wait, no, 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 no. That's not the that's not that's not the end. There's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game coming out. It's called Shredder's Revenge. If you order right now, or whenever, if you pre-order it at one of these sites here, go support Warrior64, the hard working person, always putting up links to good deals and everything. But you also get a free Pizza Hut cook coupon. Apparently it's in the box. Apparently it's in the box. Just so you know. Matter of fact, I should delete my I have, a, I have a comment here. It's already been responded. It's already replied, so we're good. All right. But yeah. You or you can pre-order it, and the, the coupon is going to be in the goddamn box. Uh, $35 for a coupon? Yeah, man. $35 for a pizza? That's a slammer deal, depending on where you go. Pizza Hut? Shit's legendary, man. thought you guys are violently against pre-orders. Not when it comes to the free pizza. <laughs> Will I play it? I, I'm going to get it. I'm probably going to get it on Switch. 
I'm probably gonna get it on Switch. It's $34.99 on Switch. Uh, I don't know where it is on other on other platforms. I'm not gonna click on it because I'm gonna show my personal information. Uh, <laughs> uh, $35 pizza. Yeah, man, might be a good one though. You don't know. Anyways, so you can go pre-order that if you like, and you get a pizza. I'm gonna t I'm gonna pre-order because I already know what I'm getting into. It's Ninja Turtles. It's an arcade style game. Uh, I played Turtles in Time when it was in art in the arcades. I loved it. Uh, I played, uh, I think I've played like every Ninja Turtle game released up through uh, probably 2005 or something like that. Everything after that, I don't know. It kind of went in a weird direction, but um, fucking, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally down for a new Ninja Turtles game. 100%, 100%, especially in this style. Just give me my Battletoads. They had a Battletoads remaster, actually. I own it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Time to break out them skills and show us how it's done. You can have up to six players in this game, by the way. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work with the uh, see wait, 2249 on Nintendo eShop. Oh, well, shit. Well, see, that's where the pizza money comes in. I don't get a pizza with that. I could spend $35 to get a pizza. Shoot. You always get Ninja Turtles and Battle Toads confused. That makes me sad. <laughs> Ah, what BL tank? What are you doing here? Aren't you here? <laughs> Simpsons turtles and metal slug arcade days were awesome. That's right. Big sad. Okay. Yeah, but one is a turtles and a half shell. One's a toad, man. What? You, what? You, Ninja turtles are toads and helmets. Red, we're gonna fight. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. That's it for the news. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Especially these folks right here. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Drinking your beer downstairs. I'll come down and join you in just a minute. But again, thank you guys are the best. Thank you, thank you. Say goodbye to Facebook. Everyone say bye to Facebook. I haven't posted a thing on Facebook in fucking years, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to see you guys uh, uh, tomorrow. Well, I'm going to see you guys in a minute. But everybody else on uh, YouTube, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Right? Everyone say bye to Facebook. And um, and chat, hang out uh, uh, for a minute. Check that TikTok. Yeah, follow me on all the things. AK Mike B, AK Mike Beats on TikTok. I don't I haven't posted there in a minute. Gotta get back in the music shit. Anyways, gotta go. Cause the music says so. Okay, bye. <laughs>